The Ratchet Rehab Series continues with this, a Snap-on F80 ratchet that I got for free. The reason I got this for free is because it doesn't work. The selector is stuck in the middle and the drive simply freewheels. I got this from a place where I've bought tons of used tools over the years. The guy asked me why I wanted to buy it because it didn't work and I said I wanted to try to fix it. I offered to buy it, but he gave it to me for free. I cleaned it up enough to see that there are two tiny little torque screws holding on the faceplate, and these are T10. I have owned several different F80 ratchets over the years, but I actually don't think I ever opened any of them. That is nasty and rusty in there. I don't see anything obviously broken, so hopefully I can get this working with just a good cleaning. This little spring goes in the front, I'll pull the main gear out. Yeah, check out all that rust. And then the two paws in here. There's one more little flat spring in there. Next, pull out this piece. Don't lose that little ball. This is kind of an interesting design. That spring that I pulled out at the very beginning goes in here, and if you can see down in there, there is a little ball bearing. And the spring pushes down on it, which puts pressure on it and it can lock into these two indentations on the selector switch. So that is what locks it into either forward or reverse. That's interesting. I ran all these parts through the ultrasonic cleaner. The other littler parts, I'm just gonna scrub by hand. You can see there's still a good bit of surface rust on some of these parts. I'm going to uh, scrub as much of this off as I can with a brass brush. I'm also going to scrub the paws here by hand. The teeth are all kind of clogged up with rusted goo. Uh, hopefully if I clean that out of there, this will work okay. That actually worked really well. These look pretty good. To reassemble it, first I'm going to reinstall the selector, but I'm going to put just a tiny bit of grease down there, and I will be using Super Lube Synthetic Grease, which I think Snap-on might use from the factory. Next up is this piece. And don't forget the tiny ball bearing that goes down in there. I'll add just a drop of oil in there. Then this little spring. Next is this little M-shaped piece. Goes right on top there, like that. Next up are the two paws and these parts with the divot go towards the back of the ratchet. I'm adding super lube now to lubricate the gear. Then I will put that in there. The cover plate is about ready to go back on and it does seem to be working. It kind of looks dirty in there, but it's not. That's a little bit of surface rust on the face of the gear. And I didn't want to scrub that too hard because right here is a, a rubber seal. These cover plate screws had Loctite from the factory, but I'm gonna skip that because I don't really need it. And there it is, it is working just fine now. I can switch directions again. So like a lot of non-working ratchets I find, this was not broken, it was just gunked up with old grease and some rust, and all it really needed was a good cleaning. So overall, this thing cleaned up pretty well. It does have some finish wear, which is fine, and a couple owner's marks, but hey, for free, I am very happy with this. I know some of you are thinking, well, it's Snap-on, it has a lifetime warranty. Why didn't you just warranty it? I don't really like abusing warranties. In this situation, you know, I got it for free. I knew it was broken when I got it, so I don't really feel like that's a situation where I should warranty it. Uh, if it turned out it was actually broken, I just would have bought a rebuild kit. What do you guys think? Was this an okay deal for zero dollars and some elbow grease? And should I continue the Ratchet Rehab series? Let me know in the comments down below, and thanks for watching.